What's up, YouTube? This is Two Off of TV. So, uh, before I get into the video, I just want to uh, give a shout out to a couple of my subscribers. Let me give a shout out to Bernard for his contribution. Um, I saw it today, and uh, I thank you for the shout out. Uh, I try to be uh, active on YouTube, you know, so I try to make sure I do the best videos I can for you guys. So, I appreciate that. I want to give a, 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 a you know, internal. I want to give an eternal shout out to Larry for his uh, contribution. Uh, you know, thank you for that. And uh, you know, anytime you have requests, let me know. And also, shout out to Aaron. I saw your contribution today as well. So thank all of you guys for your uh, support. Thank everybody that supports me on YouTube and on the Patreon. All right, so. Now that I got the point guards and shooting guards out the way, I need to get small forwards out the way. All right. So this is one where there's going to be some changes. Not a lot, but there's going to be some changes as to opposed to how I had this thing last time. Now, number 10 last time on the list, I believe I had Alex English. This time, Alex English is not on my list. He's just outside of my top 10 now. Um, but I also want to give a notable mention to some other guys who came close, but they just didn't make the cut for me, all right? Um, I, first of all, I want to give a shout out to, you know, pioneers like Paul Arizon. You know, uh, he was great. Uh, you know, Joe Fox is too ancient, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I couldn't seriously consider him. Um, Adrian Dantley is a top 10 caliber player, but, you know, I just didn't think that, you know, he fit that vote, that that mark. Uh, I did have Alex Angus last time, but, you know, like I said, I chose not to put him on it this time. Um, Paul Pierce is a guy that I really strongly considered putting in the top 10. I almost did. But I just don't feel like Paul Pierce is a top 10 all-time small forward. You know, it just, it didn't feel comfortable. It didn't feel right, you know, having him as a top 10 all-time small forward. Um, it's close, but not quite there. You know, the longevity almost swayed me to do it, but I don't, I just don't think so. Um, come on, Anthony. I don't have him in my top 10 right now. If come on, Anthony was to win a championship, I don't think it's likely, but if he were to win a title and say, you know, had a few more accomplishments, then I would probably feel compelled to put him in my top 10. I just think Carmelo was a more dominant player um, than Paul Pierce, even though Paul Pierce did win a championship. But I just think Carmelo was more dominant. So um, those, guys, those guys are close, but they're not quite there. Um, but, you know, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. But at number 10, I have James, James Worthy. Big game, James, all right? With the Los Angeles Lakers, he was drafted in 1982 from University of North Carolina. Of course, famously, he played with a young Michael Jordan in North Carolina. And um, James Worthy was known for... His, you know, exciting uh, gameplay. He was a guy that was very athletic, great in the post, nice turnaround jumper. Um, you know, was very efficient, um, and he was one of those rare players who played noticeably better when the stakes were high or in the playoffs than he did during the regular season. He stepped his game up tremendously. That's why he had the nickname Big Game James. He was the total opposite of that other James that people laud today, who's regular season exhibition game James, in my opinion. Okay? Um, but James Worthy really stepped up his game. His numbers reflect that. And another thing about uh, James Worthy that's impressive is that he was able to score the way he did, even though he rarely had 
plays drawn up for him. You know what I'm saying? He was the perfect third guy because he was able to do what he could do, you know, without really, you know, being a ball dominant or, or being in a position where he had the ball in his hands all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he was great. And um, the Lakers would not have been able to do what they, they did in the 1980s without James Worthy. You know, um, he was a, a perennial all-star. And if he had been in a system that featured him even more, his numbers would have been even more impressive. You know, he's truly, to me, a top 10 all-time small forward. Um, if he, Like I said, if he was on a, a mediocre team or an average team and it was it was just his team, I'm confident he could have averaged 25, 27 uh, points per game or, or something in that, um, that realm. Uh, but, you know, he won, I believe, it was three NBA championships, I believe. I believe he won three NBA championships, 1985, 87, and 88. Uh, he wasn't on a team in 80 and 82. Uh, he replaced Jamal Wilkes in the starting lineup, I believe his second year. That's how great he was. And, um, you know, he played well all the way into the early 1990s until injuries uh, and age began to uh, rob him of his athletic ability and his injury. Now, uh, James Worthy was born in 1960. And he was born in Gastonia, North Carolina. And um, he played college, excuse me, he played high school uh, basketball at Ashbrook High. And during his senior year at Ashbrook High, he averaged 21.5 points, 12.5 rebounds, and 5.5 and assists. And he led the team to the state championship game. He was named both a Parade Magazine and McDonald's All-American. And he was selected to play the 1979 McDonald's All-American game that featured future NBA Hall of Famers such as Isaiah Thomas, Dominique Wilkins, and Ralph Sampson. After he graduated from high school, Worthy attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And it was there that he starred. He was the future star. Him, Sam Perkins were the featured uh, stars particular uh, James Worthy. Now his freshman year was cut short by a broken ankle, but as a sophomore he was a key member of the 81 NCAA runner-up team alongside Stan Perkins and Al Wood. As a junior power forward, Worthy was the leading scorer at nearly 16 points a game of a Tar Heels NCAA championship team that featured one of the greatest collections of talent in college basketball history, Sam Perkins and a freshman Michael Jordan. A consensus first team All-American, Worthy was named co-winner of the Helms Foundation Player of the Year with Ralph Sampson of Virginia. He dominated the 1982 championship game against the Georgetown Hoyas, which was a 63-62 victory over the Hoyas. With a 28.4 rebound performance on 13 of 17 shooting. Now, that's a thing that was a hallmark of James Worthy's career. Efficiency. Um, I believe for his career, I'm going to look at his numbers. I think he shot something around 52% from the floor for his career. Yes. He shot 52.1% from the floor for his career. And that includes, and that's including his decline period in the 90s, where, you know, he really struggled. Uh, his last year in 80 games, he only shot 41% from the floor, which is not his normal output at all. And I, I would say in his prime from 82 to 91, probably was closer to 54% shooting. And in the playoffs, he shot over 54% from the floor. And in his prime, he shot 
five percent of the board, including leading. Uh, let me see. I think in nineteen eighty five, he shot sixty two percent from the floor in the playoffs, and in nineteen eighty six and nineteen eighty three in the regular season, both years he shot fifty eight percent from the floor. This is a guy that was very smart with his shot selection and very accurate from the field. You know, so that's one of the hallmarks of James Worthy's career. If you like efficiency, like I do, um, you would love James Worthy. Now, James Worthy, of course, won a championship in college in 1982. And because of this success, Worthy decided to forego his senior year and enter the NBA draft. And the Los Angeles Lakers had received, but this is the the setup for this. Back in 1979, the Lakers had received the Cleveland Cavaliers' 82 first round draft pick in exchange for Don Ford three years prior. So even back then, they were going to have a first round draft pick three years in the future because of an earlier trade. So the Lakers had an opportunity to get James Worthy, even though they were defending champions because of that earlier pick. That it was a coin flip at the time of whether or not James Worthy was going to go to either the Lakers or the worst team in the NBA at that time, the Cavaliers. And I'm pretty sure James Worthy was very glad that, that you know that it went for him, um, and he went to the Los Angeles Lakers. As a rookie, James uh, Worthy was very effective. He averaged 13.4 points per game. As I said, he shot 58% from the floor. With his speed, dynamic ability to score by the hand, and dazzling play above the rim, James Worthy thrived in the Lakers. Showtime offense. He was especially effective in transition and fast break opportunities. And um, the picture I used kind of highlighted that. He was especially dangerous going up against you know teams that were a little bit slower of foot, like the Boston Celtics at times. But, you know, in his rookie year, he uh, broke his foot, I believe, which ended his year prematurely. But the second year, the second season, 83-84, he was better than ever. He replaced Jamal Wilkes in the starting lineup. And that year, they went to the NBA Finals. uh, But it was uh, during the Finals in a game where he threw an errant pass at the end that was picked off by Gerald Henderson. Um, That was one of the problems the Lakers had that series, a lot of miscues and missed shots and turnovers that led to Boston winning that series uh, in seven. Um, but James Worthy generally was tremendous for Lakers. And as I said before, usually in the playoffs, he rolls his game tremendously. Scoring average, rebounds, assists. And also, as the team transitioned from being Kareem's team to being Magic's team by the 86-87 season, this is when certain players who had dominated earlier, like Kareem, uh, to make up for Kareem's deterioration, the Lakers had to lean on other younger players who were closer to their prime. Like Magic had to lean more a little bit on the Byron Scotts, but especially James Worthy. At that time, James Worthy was hitting his stride, so he had to take more of a low no longer was he just like relegated to third in the offense. Now at times, James Worthy had to lead the team in scoring. Uh, as he did uh, throughout the 80s, there were times when you know he was number one, number two on the team in scoring. Um, in 1988, that had to be probably James Worthy's finest year. Um, the Lakers repeated as champions that year. And James Worthy played one of his best games of his career, I believe, in that uh, game seven. 
that determined the outcome. We had a triple double in that game. As the Lakers transitioned from the 80s to the 90s, James Worthy continued to play at a high level. Um, after Kareem Bill Jabbar retired, the Lakers did go to another finals in 1991. But this was the beginning of the end of James Worthy's dominance. That year, he shot 49% from the floor, which was a career low. It's still a respectable figure. But it was, I believe, James Worthy had an ankle sprain in 1991 in the time of the finals, which affected his uh, availability for that series. And coming into the 91 92 season, or during the 91 92 season, I believe, he had to have knee surgery. Now, it was that surgery that essentially robbed James Worthy of his quickness. And uh, his explosiveness, his first step. So he was not the same player afterwards. He was not even close. And you can see it in the reflection of his, his production on the court. And after the 1994 season, James Worthy called it quits after a glorious 12 year career. But when you look at James Worthy's accomplishments, they are tremendous. He was a three time NBA champion. 1988 NBA Finals MVP. He was a seven-time All-Star consecutively from 1986 to 1992. Actually, from 1985 to 91, Two-time All-NBA third team. He was on the NBA All-Rookie first team in 83. He was on the NBA's 50th anniversary all-time team. His number 42 was retired by Los Angeles Lakers. And he was a great, great college player, NCAA champion in 1982, NCAA Final Four Most Outstanding Player in 1982, Contestants First Team All-America in 1982, First Team All-ACC in 1982, Second Team All-ACC in 1981, All-ACC Tournament MVP in 1982, his number 52 retired by North, the North Carolina Tar Heels, First Team Parade All-America in 1979, Second Team Parade All-American in 1979. Rick Tarnall's All-American in 1979. Fucking James Worthy, 16,324. I'm just talking. Uh, James Worthy, uh, 16,320 points. 17.6 points per game average. Uh, 5.1 rebounds, 3 assists per game. And um, extraordinarily player. And, um, he is a Lakers Memorial a Hall of Famer. Number 10, in my opinion, Big Game James Worthy.